What's up guys, Ryan here from E39 Source. We're gonna do a video today, kind of highly requested, especially as of late, um, video on safely jacking your car up, the front end, the back end, on a lift, uh, one corner at a time, however you wish to do that. If you own one of these cars and uh, do some DIYs, it is inevitable that at some point you will need to gain access to the underside of the car. So we're gonna talk about how to do that safely, a little bit about some of the equipment and uh, where the jack points are on this car. If you're new to it, you might not know uh, where are some safe places to jack the car from. So uh, we're gonna start off with the most basic tool that you should have and, and absolutely make use of, and that is the floor jack. Uh, this is just a generic Harbor Freight Pittsburgh three-ton low-profile floor jack. It's not the one that I used back in Ohio. It's similar, but I actually like the one I have uh, also at home here in San Diego, not at the shop, but um, I like the other one a little bit better. Reason being, it's a little bit longer, and that makes jacking the front end of the car up which the, uh, the jack point for that is the bottom of the front subframe, which I'll show you in the air. I'm gonna put the car on the lift and I'll show you the front and rear jacking points from there. But the longer jack makes it easier to get under the front of the car. Um, let's firstly talk about uh, just one corner at a time. That's a really, really common, typical thing you might wanna do. You could do your brakes like this, go around and, and just do it corner by corner. If you do do that, I absolutely recommend um, some jack stands, some safety stands, because you don't want to be under a car or be working on a car simply supported by a hydraulic jack. Should the jack fail, you're going to have 3,800 pounds coming down on your toes, and that's not good for anybody. Uh, but to get the car initially in the air, I like to use some sort of a pad or adapter. This thing from ECS Tuning is fantastic. I will link it down below. Um, I've got eight of them here at the shop, four on each lift. Uh, but this thing perfectly fits up inside of the BMW jack pad, which hopefully is still in place on your car. And it's this little plastic part that seats up in the chassis, excuse the dirt under there. But it's got an indent right in the middle of it that the ECS pad fits perfectly into. So let me try to do this on camera with one hand here. And you give that a couple of pumps and it will seat perfectly up into the jack pad. And now your weight is very evenly distributed and safely distributed on the jack like that. If you don't have that, of course, a piece of wood, a piece of rubber, um, something would work. You really don't have to use anything, but I just feel a little bit better um, having these rigid edges of this cup here not crushing our plastic underbody trays. So, you know, of course, at this point, you do want to ensure that you are on flat level ground, the car is in park or gear, and your uh, rear parking brake is, is engaged and working. Uh, once you've ensured all of that, you can pump up the jack as high as you need to go. If you are breaking your wheels free uh, or removing the wheels, make sure to break those lug nuts free. There's 17 millimeter studs before you get the wheel in the air. Otherwise, you're going to be spinning the whole wheel unless you've got an impact gun. But lowering the car can kind of be an art. <laughs> Every jack's different. This one, the whole handle turns. Um, I know the one in Ohio had a little knob on top, and you had to be so careful with that knob because if, if you just grabbed it and turned it, you just slam, the whole car would come down. Uh, this one's pretty easy. We just rotate the knob counterclockwise, and it drops back down into position. Talking about the front, I mentioned that I like the jack I have at home better, which is also a um, heavy-duty Pittsburgh Harbor Freight jack. It's a two-ton, not a three-ton, and it's maybe four to six inches longer, which aids us in the front. I'll show you the specific point under the car uh, for a V8 and a, and a straight six car. They're a little bit different. Your V8, 540, and M5 use a little bubble part of the front subframe, which is steel. The inline six cars, 525, 28, and 30, have a black plastic little pad, similar to the ones that uh, we just looked at on the rockers. So it's a little bit easier to find. But this jack right now, I don't think would work to jack up just the front end of this car. We're gonna push it under and immediately I can feel it, it tap the plastic um, engine pan that's in place. We're not hitting the bumper, but the plastic pan. And we're probably not in there far enough uh, to actually reach the jack point. So how do you get around that? Well, if you have a set of ramps, couple two by fours, something you can drive the front wheels up, uh, maybe even two, uh, two layers of two by fours, just make sure there's no nails in them. Uh, then you're gonna buy yourself an inch and a half with each two by four. So if you do two, you'll get three inches of additional clearance in the front, which should be enough to slide the entire jack under there, locate the jack point, and then raise the front end of the car. Again, making sure that you are in gear, park, and or parking brake on, so you don't um, have the car start to roll. Okay, so on a lift, we just use the, uh, each of the lift arms to go to each individual jacking point like this. And then I mentioned the ECS 
adapters that are in there and they each fit up into the jack pad which is super super nice now um, I'll point out the center jack pad this is an M5 so obviously the V8 and the V8 subframe and we'll kind of get a look here from the front we have the engine belly pan which does hang down below the front bumper uh, so that's what we were hitting into with the jack before follow that back you have the trap door for the oil drain bolt follow that back Right about six or eight inches behind that, you have this cutout in the transmission pan. And uh, I don't know what to call it other than kind of a bubble in the subframe. And there's a hole in the center. That is your front jacking point. That is the subframe, which is bolted to the car with uh, six really huge 18 millimeter bolts. So that is absolutely adequate to hold the weight of the car. Um, when I jack from here, I usually put a small piece of wood on the floor jack. Um, you wouldn't have to do that, but I certainly wouldn't use the ECS jack point because if that fell in one of these grooves, it could it could shift and then crack this paneling. You just want to make sure that you're dead centered on that center jack point. Uh, when you do jack from there, let's say you're going to do front brakes, that puts your front axle in the air. You can take off both front wheels. That's dandy. Um, now you probably want to use jack stands, and the jack stands you can then use um, right in here in the front lift points. Let's say you're doing brakes and now you want to get the rear end in the air. I have always used the center differential as the jack point. Occasionally I'll get yelled at for it. People say it's not good for it. It's not good for the bushings. I'm sure it's not good for it, but I've also never had anything bad happen from doing it. I've never worn out, prematurely worn out differential or subframe bushings. It's a very, very strong part of the car. Um, I would absolutely recommend a piece of wood in between your floor jack and the differential cooling fins. Get it centered, get it straight, um, and don't leave the weight on there the whole time. Get the car as high as you want it in the air, and then again use the side um, rocker panel jack points to support the, the weight of the vehicle with um, safety stands. Something like these, the ones on the right, the Pittsburgh, these are big six ton. I always go for something rated two, three, four times um, as much as you want to actually put on it. And then up top, I would put uh, small blocks of wood. Just when I say blocks of wood, I'm just talking about stuff like this. Just a piece of a two by four cut like that, or a piece of plywood cut like this. I've used this many times on the differential and front subframe mounting point with uh, with no trouble. As we talk about uh, capacities as well, so I, I do recommend the six tons for the jack stands, just because acquiring those and, and really any rating is is easy and cheap enough. And then as far as the jack goes, obviously the higher capacity the better. I would not use anything under two tons. Um, two tons is 4,000 pounds. That's more than the entire car weighs. And you're certainly not lifting probably even more than about 55% of the car. Uh, but the two to three ton range seems to be fine for a floor jack. If you're concerned about how long you can leave the car up in the air like this on a lift being supported by all four jacking points on the rocker panels, it really isn't a limit for that. My car during the rebuild service was up for four or five months at a time, I think. and. Uh, there were no problems whatsoever with that. Um, as you do lower the car back down, you'll notice it sits pretty high. That's kind of because the wheels are just towed in a little bit or, or haven't compressed and pushed all the way out. Uh, drive the car a little bit, push it, honestly push it six feet forward, six feet back, do that a few times and, and it'll settle back down to where it was. Um, if you're gonna support the, the front of the car and leave the rear uh, weight of the vehicle suspended by the rear wheels, you don't really have anything to worry about with that either. Just make sure everything's safe. Um, same thing with having the uh, the rear up and, and weight on the front wheels. Let's say you're going one corner at a time as you work on suspension or brakes or something like that and you want to be able to slide a jack stand or two under the car um, in case that hydraulic jack were to fail on you. So there's no ideal place to put jack stands under this car. Uh, you probably don't want to put a lot of weight through it, but this mounting point where the wishbone comes out into the steering knuckle would be an acceptable place to have a stand. This is subframe here, so that's going to hold the weight of the car. Um, you could also come over here and anywhere kind of in this area is very rigid chassis in this corner. It's not ideal. This is the, the beefened up place made for jacking, but uh, maybe put a two by four on top of something and just have it in this general area. Don't go over here too far. Um, under these panels is just uh, floorboard and it's going to go through that fairly easily. Ideally just raise the car in halves, front or rear end, and then support um, not only with the jack on the center point uh, being in the front subframe or the rear differential, but also put stands under the rocker panel jack points as well. So you lower the car down, this is what I mean by sits high. Uh, the wheels are just pinched in at the bottom 
and then you notice this big old gap in between the top of the tire and the bottom of the fender, and it's probably even more pronounced up front. Regardless of what suspension you have, it's just gonna sit a little bit high after you put it down. Uh, I always make a point after lowering the car to within a couple of minutes, either just drive it out and drive it around and, and let the suspension resettle. I wouldn't wanna leave it like this overnight or for an extended period of time. I don't know what if, it, if it would actually hurt anything or not, but it just seems that that's not the normal resting position of the suspension. In summary, if you don't have access to big automotive lifts like these, I just recommend doing it by axle. Do the front, do the rear, support with jack stands. Um, wheel chocks can be useful if you're going to work on any sort of an incline. I, I certainly recommend against it, but if your driveway has ever so slight of a slope to it, just use a rubber wheel chock from uh, even Amazon. I think the ones I have are probably from Harbor Freight, and uh, I like to use two instead of one just because they're cheap and super easy to use, but um, be careful. Check everything twice before you crawl under the car. It's not worth getting hurt over. And uh, have fun. Do some DIYs. Go watch some more E39 Source videos, and thanks for watching this one. We'll talk in the next one. Take care.